Take out your Bibles, please, and turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 5. The Gospel of John, chapter 5, beginning at verse 15. You know, throughout the ages, there have been many men who have pro proclaimed themselves to be God. Look at the pharaohs. They all proclaimed themselves to be God. And they wanted men to come down and bow before them. Then there were the Roman emperors. Many of those men, they wanted men to come up and burn incense to them as if they were somehow deity. The Rome, the Japanese emperor during World War II, he proclaimed himself to be God in flesh. Of course he wasn't. And all those men, well they all died. And when they died they lost, they lost their authority. But Jesus Christ when he died. All authority was given to him from the Father. And he reigns forever and ever. And he's the one we're going to be talking about today. In verse 15, it says, The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. And for this reason, the Jews persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself, but what He sees the Father do. For whatever He does, the Son also does in like manner. For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all things that He Himself does. And He will show Him greater works than these that you might marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to those whom He will. For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. That all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. And he who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life, and, not sh and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself so he has granted to the Son to have life in himself and has given him all authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life, and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. I can of myself do nothing, as I hear I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. But there is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesses of me is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne a witness to the truth. Yet I do not receive the testimony from man, but I say these things that you might be saved. He was a burning and a shining lamp, and you were willing for a time to rejoice in his light. But I have a greater witness than John's, for the works which my Father has given me to finish the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. But you do not have his word abiding in you because whom he sent you do not believe. You search the scriptures for them, for in them you think that you have eternal life and these are which they all testify concerning me. 
but you are not willing to come to me that you might have life. I do not receive honor from men, but I know you, that you do have you do not have the love of God in you. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. But if another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another, but do not seek the honor that comes from the only God? Do not think that I shall accuse you to my Father, but there is one who accuses you, and it is Moses in whom you trust. For if you have believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote about me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Now in verse 15, we talked about last time how we had a bunch of religious leaders and Jesus healed a man on the Sabbath. But these guys didn't have a whole lot of compassion on that man. They were more focusing on that Sabbath day. They thought that you couldn't do no work on the Sabbath. But God allows, as we showed last time, He allows works of mercy on the Sabbath. And it says, talks about the Jews here. Well, whenever it talks about the Jews, it's talking about the religious leaders of Israel. See, they cared about more about their strict religious observances, but their, their hearts were far from God. And in verse 16 it says, they began to persecute Jesus. They began to persecute him. And that still goes on today. Those who follow Jesus Christ are going to be persecuted. I get a, a, a little newsletter every month or so from a place called Voice of the Martyrs. And they, re, they report about, on all the persecution that's going around around the world. And there are people that live, Christians who live in these Islamic countries, their churches are being attacked. They're being attacked. And people who live in India, the Hindu priests, they don't like to hear about Jesus. So they, so they persecute Christians there. And even in Israel, hear the Lord, he's, in, he's talking to his own people. Well, even in Israel, there was an article that said that there was an ultra-Orthodox Jew who was a nationalist, and he, he planned a bomb at this Christian pastor's house. And well, the bomb blew up and it, it killed the, the pastor's son. And just a year ago, there was a, a Christian church in an ultra-Orthodox community, and it got burned down. And people think it, it wasn't the Arabs who did it. See, people can't handle Jesus. People can't handle him as being who he really, really said he was. So they're going to persecute him, and they're going to persecute those who, who follow him. Jesus said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. And in verse 17, Jesus is going to tell them a little bit about who he really is. He says, Jesus answered them and said, My father has been working until now, and I have been working as well. See, there's some people out there that think that God just, he created the universe, and really he just kind of let it all go, and then let the universe kind of take care of itself. That's not what the Bible preaches. The Bible teaches that, you know, God's, God's in charge of the universe. He's sustaining the universe. If it wasn't for him sustaining the universe, there'd be total chaos. And Jesus is saying, hey, I was with the Father at the very beginning, and I've been working alongside him. See, see Jesus is one with the Father. He's one with the Father. And boy, when he said that, these religious leaders, yeah, they couldn't take it too well. 
In verse 18 it says, Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he not only broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. You know, there's a lot of cult groups out there that, that they say that Jesus never claimed to be God. And they, they don't believe that he was God. But, you know, the Bible is very clear. The religious leaders knew what Jesus was saying to them. They didn't kill Jesus because he was a nice guy and he was going around doing miracles. Nah, they killed him because they thought he was blaspheming. See, Jesus says, they said that he was making himself equal with God. And that was true. He was equal with God. But a lot of these cult groups, they can't handle that. They, they worship a little different Jesus than the Jesus of the Bible. But the Bible is very clear. He was God in flesh. Now it also says they wanted to kill him. It was basically blas uh, uh, a blaspheming law. And you're going to find that law in the uh, book of uh, Leviticus, chapter 24. So why don't you go over to Leviticus 24. And in verse 16, it says this, And whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall certainly stone him. The stranger as well, who is born in the land, when he blasphemes the name of the Lord, he shall be put to death. See, these guys didn't understand. They couldn't handle the fact that Jesus really was God in human flesh. See, Jesus never blasphemed the Lord. He never said nothing against the Lord. But in their minds, that was blaspheming. But see, the Old Testament, if they would have read their Old Testament, it all, it all pointed to them. It all, it all said that the Messiah would be, would be God in flesh. For example, in Isaiah verse 9, chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and they shall call him Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. See, the Messiah, the Prince of Peace, is going to be called Everlasting Father and Mighty God. The Old Testament said so. But they weren't looking at the Messiah as, as being that for whatever reason. They couldn't handle it. And in the book of Micah, if you go over to the Old, chapter, the Old Testament uh, book of Micah, in Micah 5. In Micah 5, 2. The Lord's also going to tell you a little bit about the Messiah. In Micah 5, 2, it says this, But you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come to me, the one who is ruler of Israel, whose goings forth was from old, from everlasting. Ah, that one born in Bethlehem was going to come forth from old, from everlasting. He never had a beginning. You know, there's a guy out there, he's called the Dalai Lama. And he goes around trying to say he's preaching peace. And his followers actually call him the God King. <laughs> you know, the Dalai Lama. He might be preaching peace, but he's just a man. He wasn't born in Bethlehem. That's what the prophecy says. The Messiah's got to be born in Bethlehem. And he's going to be from everlasting. Not a Dalai Lama. He's going to die just like the, just like the pharaohs and the, the Roman emperors and the emperor of Japan during World War II. They're going to die. And he's died just like them. Ain't going to be much to his authority anymore. Dalai Lama is a false prophet, by the way. Amen claims himself to be equal with God after Christ. Ah, something wrong with the man. 
Going back to John chapter 5. It says this in verse 19. Then Jesus answered and said to, to them, Most assuredly I say to you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son does in like manner. Jesus is given a picture here of a father teaching his son. And anybody who has a family knows that, you know, you want to teach your son something, you, you get down and you, you show them how to do something, and they, they, they follow exactly what you're doing. That's how they learn. Well, Jesus is giving this picture here to them. He says, hey, you know, the Father created the universe, and I was with them. And he says, hey, you know, the Father heals people, and look what I'm doing. The Father raises the dead, and His Son raises the dead as well. That's the authority that the, that the Son has. In verse 20, it says this, For the Father loves the Son and shows Him all things that He does Himself. And He's going to show Him greater works than these that you might marvel. Jesus is saying, hey boys, <laughs> stick around a while. There's a lot more coming that I'm going to show you. Then it says in 21, it says, For as the Father raises the dead and gives life to them, even so the Son gives life to, him, to whom he wills. The, the Son gives life to whomever he wills. You know, in the Old Testament, they knew about God raising the dead. In the story of Elijah, if you go over to 1 Kings chap chapter 17, in 1 Kings 17, and beginning at verse 21, it talks about Elijah and his boy died. And it says, Elijah stretched himself out on the child three times and cried out to the Lord and said, Oh, Lord, my God, I pray that you let this child's soul come back to him. Then the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came back to him, and he revived. It said, The Lord heard the voice of Elijah. See, it wasn't Elijah who raised that, that boy. It was the Lord who raised the boy. And some people focus on, on, the, on the prophet Elijah, but not what the Lord did. It's the same thing with a lot of these healing ministries that are out there you see on TV. They focus men more on the, on the man that's up there. They don't focus in on the Lord. I have kind of a problem with some of those miracles they're doing. I don't think they are miracles, but anyhow, there's a difference. You need to focus on the Lord. The Lord... The Lord is the God of the universe, and He can heal, and He can raise the dead. Verse 22, the Lord's going to show him what authority He has now. He says, For the Father judges no one, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. The Father judges no one. It's the Son now who, who judges all men. That's why Jesus has to be God. He has to be God. You know why? If you go over to Psalm chapter 75, in the book of Psalms, 75, in verse 7, Psalm 75, 7, says this, But God is the judge. He puts down one and exalts another. God is the judge. But here it says the Son. The Son is going to be the one that's given judgment. He's allowed to be he's allowed to judge all men. So Jesus has to be God. There's another case for the deity of Christ. How can you miss it? But they were missing it. These guys were they didn't get it. They didn't get it. In verse 23 it says, 
all should honor the Son just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. Later, Jesus is going to give a parable to him about a king who sent his son to the people to give them instructions. But they're not going to listen to the son. And they're going to want to kill him. And they do kill him. And that's what's happening here. They're not going to, these Jewish leaders, they're not going to follow him. They're not going to accept him, the son. In verse 24, it says, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but is passed from death unto life. From death unto life. So you need to hear his word. That's what it says. Matter of fact, you can't evangelize somebody without the word of God. It's not going to happen. That's what the Holy Spirit uses to convict people's hearts. You know, you got to hear the word of the Lord. And if you hear his words, you're going to have everlasting life. That's what's going to be given to you. And in verse 25 it says, Most assuredly I say to you, the hour is coming is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. Now this isn't talking about physical rising from the dead. That's not what it's talking about here. Because it says that the time is now here when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. It's talking about your spiritual spiritual death. See all men are, are dead in trespasses and sin. You're spiritually dead. In order to be raised to life, you need to hear the word of the Lord. You need to go to the Son. Honor the Son. Or you're not going to get everlasting life. You'll never be, you'll never be really alive ever without Him. You'll be spiritually dead. Then verse 20, 26 says, For as the Father has life in Himself, he has granted the Son to have life from Himself also. See, all life comes from Christ. If you go over to John chapter 1, verse 4, in John 1, 4, it says this, talking about Jesus, it says, In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. If you're walking in that spiritual darkness and you want to get out of it, you've got to come to Jesus. He's the one that's going to give you eternal life. You won't find it any other place. And verse 27 says, and, and has given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. The Son of Man. Now there's another passage there. You go back to the Old Testament. He's telling these leaders who he really is again. If you go to uh, the book of Daniel, in the book of Daniel chapter 7, and in verse 13, Daniel has a vision. And in Daniel 7, 13, it says this. It says, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man, coming with the clouds of heaven. And he came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Then to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom to all peoples and nations and languages to serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom the one which shall not be destroyed. <laughs> He's that one that the Father has given all authority. He was prophesied by Daniel. He's saying, Jesus is saying to these guys, Hey boys, you know who Daniel talked about? Or I'm him. And in verse 28, of, of back in the Gospel of John chapter 5, it says, Do not marvel at this, 
for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and will come forth and those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. Now this, when it talks about the, the good here and the evil, it's not talking about good works and evil works. The good works, the good that it's talking about here is those who have put their faith in Christ. That's the good thing that you do. It's not talking about some moral, you know, if you've done some really moral good things then you're going to get to heaven. And that's not what it's talking about. The good is putting your faith in that one that he's talking about, the Messiah. He said, hey, you've got to come to me. And the evil are those who reject him, who have no faith in him. That's what it's talking about. Then in verse 30, it says this. It says, I can do nothing of myself. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is righteous, because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. If I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. You see, in order, in the Old Testament, in order for something to be true, you had to have at least two witnesses. You had to have two witnesses. For example, if you go to the, uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 17. In Deuteronomy 17, it gives a law. Deuteronomy 17, 13. I'm sorry, Deuteronomy 17, 16. It says this, Whoever is deserving of death shall be put to death on testimony of two or three witnesses. He shall, be not, be, he shall not be put to death on a testimony of one witness. See, one witness wasn't reliable. And so for, for a, a punishment such as death, you better make sure that what those claims against that person were true. And Jesus is saying, if, if I testify about myself, it's not true. But I got five witnesses, Jesus is going to tell them. I got five witnesses that testify concerning me. He says, yeah, you like, you wa like watching the, those shows out there like, like Judge Judy, all those court, court shows. Well, hey, I got some testimony here. I want to bring forward. And so going back to John 5, he says this. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that his witness, which he witnesses of me, is true. You have sent to John, and he has borne witness to the truth. John. That was John the Baptist. He bore witness of Jesus. Remember when Jesus was walking by John the Baptist and Jesus said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. See, John told the people who he was. And John said also of him, he said, I witness and testify that this is the Son of God. That was the first witness that Jesus gives but Jesus says to him, you know, I don't need any man's witness because of who I am. But I'm going to give you that witness that you might be saved. See, Jesus cared about these men. He's going to show them some things so that they might turn their hearts around and follow him. Then it says this in verse 36. But I have a greater witness than John's. For the works which the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I do bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. The works. All those miracles that Jesus was doing. See, they all pointed to what the Old Testament prophets said the Messiah would do. 
That was the next witness that Jesus brought forward. He says, hey, they bear witness to me. You look at what I'm doing. Have you ever seen any man raise, raise the dead? Have you ever seen blind men healed? Uh, but I'm doing it. You know, Nicodemus, he understood. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. And he came to Jesus and said, Rabbi, truly you are a man sent from God, for, for no man can do the things that you have done unless God were with him. And Nicodemus knew. He knew these signs that Jesus was doing pointed to somebody. Then he says, in verse 37, And the Father himself, who sent me, has testified of me. You have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his form. Now when was that? See, again, that's when going back to the that when Jesus was baptized and a voice from heaven came came about all around and says this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased ah God the Father gave him a sign when Jesus was being baptized so he was the third witness Then in verse 38 it says, But you do not have his word abiding in you, because whom he sent you do not believe. He says, Hey, you boys got a problem here. You know, you've been you've been studying your your religious texts and everything, but you're not you're not getting it. You're missing the big picture. Your hearts are far from God. That's what he's telling them. Verse 39 says, you, you search the scriptures for in them you think that you have eternal life. And these are the things which testify about me. See, there's a lot of people out there that they, 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 oh, they'll read their Bibles, okay, and they'll, they'll, focus, they'll focus in on things. Like, like they were focusing on, on the Sabbath day observances. And they were focusing on these little, little laws in the Old Testament. They made the, them the really big issue. But they, they missed the whole picture. They missed the Messiah. And that's what, what their problem was. See, the scripture itself is not what saves anybody. You can read a, have a Bible, and you can read the scripture, but that's not going to give you eternal life. It's the one who's, who the scripture is talking about. He's the one that gives you eternal life. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Messiah, that's what the, all, the, all the scriptures talk about. Well, they weren't doing that. They were just into their little... They had their focus in on other things than, what, than the Messiah. Now in verse 40 it says, But you are not willing to come to me that you should have life. I do not honor... I do not receive honor from men, but I know. But I do. I, I know you, that you do not have the love of God in you. For I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. But if another comes and re comes in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe who receive honor from one another? You do not honor that who comes from the only God. You see, these religious leaders, they weren't, they weren't interested in honoring God. They wanted the praises of men. You know, it's kind of like a picture of the, you ever see some of the popes out there? And it, the popes get all dressed up in their nice garb. And they got a fancy ring on their fingers. And they, when somebody comes up to them, they kind of, you know, put the ring out there and, People, they bow down before him and they, they kiss, his, kiss his little ring finger. Huh. See, they want the honor from men. They're not, not, they don't want to honor God. They, they, they want to get honor for themselves. And that's how these guys were. They were all dressed up really nice and they, they, they wanted to get the praises of men. 
But they were they weren't they weren't honoring God. They weren't men of God. They just had some outward form. Now the Lord's going to give them a final witness. See, he just told them the scriptures talked about him. That was the fourth witness. Now he's going to say, hey, he's going to tell him in verse 45, he says, do you think that I shall accuse you to my father? But there is one who accuses you. It is Moses in whom you trust. For if you believe Moses, you would have believed in me, for he wrote about me. He wrote about him. Again, you go back to Deuteronomy. And Moses wrote about the Messiah. And these, these leaders, they were focusing on all this stuff that's in Deuteronomy. All these regulations. But they missed the main point that Moses was talking about. He says this, Deuteronomy 18:18. 18, 18. I will rise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command. And it shall be that whoever will not hear my words, which he speaks in my name, I will require it of him. That's, who Jesus, that's the passage that Jesus is referring to. He says, Moses spoke about me. I'm speaking to you. I'm that one. You better hear my words. Because if you don't, there ain't much hope for you. There ain't any hope for you. And in verse 47 it says this, But if you do not believe his writings, how you believe my words? How you believe his words? As I said, there's a lot of men out there they focus in on their, their, their Sabbath day observances. You see a lot of these, if you look at some of these Jewish communities, ultra-Orthodox Jews, they got the Torah there and they're, they're, they're reading the Torah all the time and they're kind of going like this, you know. But they're missing the main picture. They're not, they're not seeing who Moses talk, talked about. They're missing the Messiah. Moses and the prophets all spoke concerning them. But, you know, they got this going on. But it's like, I'm not understanding. I'm not understanding. That's what a, the real picture is. It's kind of like a horse. You know, when a, on his horse races, they, they put these blinders on the horses so they can only kind of focus ahead. Head on the, head on the track and not really care about the bigger picture. And that's the way it is with men. They got their little blinders on, they're going through life. But God's all around them. And they're missing the whole picture, the big picture. They can't see the big picture. And that's where you need to come to Christ. See, Christ will come up to that horse, you know, he'll take the blinders off. It's like he'll take the blinders off of you. And then you can see the big picture. And the big picture is that Christ the one, is the one you want to see. He's the one you want to go to. He's the one from everlasting. He's the one whom God sent he would send to the world. The Son of Man. The one who's going to die for you on Calvary. He's the one you need to come to if you want your blinders taken off.